Good afternoon there, YouTube. This is Chuck. Uh, today I'm over at the museum, and what I'm going to talk to you about is lookout towers. And you can see we've got our lookout tower over behind us here, and I'm going to use that as an example. Uh, back in 19, the summer of 1960 and 1961, uh, my parents uh, took a summer job with the U.S. Forest Service up on the Coconino National Forest, north of here. And they were lookout tower operators on a lookout that was called, it's called Moki, M-O-Q-U-I. And so as a young kid, I got to spend two summers up there in the woods living on top of an 85-foot tower in a little 14 by 14 room that we worked in and lived in. And I just sort of fell in love with the whole idea of, of living on a mountaintop with a 360-degree view and being a lookout tower operator. And I've always wanted to do that. And I've always been interested in lookouts for my whole life. And so today I thought I'd make a little, talk a little bit about lookout towers. And I'm going to use the one here at the museum as an example. You can see old Slim up there. He's our, he's our lookout tower operator. He always shows up on time and never complains. Of course, he's a mannequin. And those of you that uh, look at my community page, uh, so I took a picture of him, talked about him a little bit here a few days ago. Uh, if you haven't visited my community page, I try to post something there every day. Just little nuggets, whatever pops into my head. So anyway, today we'll talk a little bit about, about lookout towers. Now this particular one, and I'm going to get around the other side of the camera, so make sure i got it pointed in the right direction. This particular one is the top two sections of the tower that used to be on Mount Ord. Uh, Mount Ord is south of here. It's about halfway between here and Metro Phoenix. It's on the uh, east side of Highway 87 when you're coming up there, and there's a the uh, a little over 7,000 foot. It's a pretty big mountain, part of the Matazel range. And uh, the lookout tower on top of Mount Ord has been there uh, ever since anybody went up there. This particular part, the one that we have here, is actually the top two sections off the old Mount Ord tower. And by the way, Mount Ord, I should, I should mention that uh, Mount Ord was named after a two-star cavalry general, and his name was Edward Otho Cresap Ord. And he was a major general. He apparently liked to have things named after him because there's several things around that are named after him. There's another Mount Ord in eastern Arizona in the White Mountains. And also uh, the former Fort Ord, California, over by Monterey, was actually named after him as well. But uh, the, the top of Mount Ord has become a, a major spot for communications. There's microwave stuff up there and cell phone towers and every kind of radio relay tower you can think of up there. And uh, back in 1980, they were going to put up a big, fancy new uh, communications network. And this tower at the time had two more sections on it, so it was about 40 foot tall. And the Forest Service said, well, you can put your communications network up here if you give us a new lookout tower, because what you're going to put up here is going to block the one we have. We're not going to be able to see out of it anymore. So the, the communications company built them a new tower. 102 foot tall and this one was disassembled and it was stored in a lot somewhere that the Forest Service had and somewhere along the line uh, they found out about it here and they asked and if they could have it and the Forest Service gave us the top two sections which of course lines up with the second floor. So now it's an exhibit here at the museum. But uh, th this tower actually stood on top of Mount Ord from 1930 to 1980. So for 50 years, this tower stood on top of that mountain. So from here, we're gonna go take a look at the upstairs part of it. We've seen the bottom, now we're gonna go look at the top. The top part of the lookout is called the cab, like the cab of a truck. And this particular example is uh, very common of the way they did it in the old days. And uh, the lookout operator came up a stairway and came through a trap door on the bottom of the tower. And this particular tower was made by a company called the Aeromotor Windmill Company, which you can imagine the windmills and lookout towers each use the same type of, the same type of, uh, of tower, just for a different purpose. And I'm too much into the sun there, I can't really show you that angle. Probably the best shot is of Old Slim is right there. And in the tower, there was a device bolted to the floor, that round thing that you see, and that's called an Osborne Firefinder. 
and the tools the lookout used were the pair of binoculars which you can see and the fire the fire finder and, and what that did is that top part swivels and when the lookout spots the smoke he swivels that around and aims that and it, it gives you a compass degree reading from 0 to 360 degrees and uh, as to where the smoke's at and then of course he uses radio to report it well that gives you a straight line as to where the smoke is at. Doesn't give you how far, although a lot of lookouts get pretty sharp about the knowing their area and can tell you, you know, where the roads are and where the mountains are and this type of thing. The idea being is if there's a second lookout and the second lookout can get a bead on it, then the bearing from this lookout and the bearing from the second lookout will cross. And when you get across, that cross will tell you exactly where that smoke is at. So these are the old time, time, time towers. Uh, as you can see, this one here is the, the, the uh, it's only about a seven by seven little room up there, so you can't even hardly walk around. Usually they had some kind of a desk in there, and then of course the trap door takes up a lot of the floor. So basically the, the uh, lookout operator didn't really have a lot of mo room to move around. The newer ones uh, have a little more room on top, and they usually have, a, have an outside catwalk all the way around the outside. And the purpose for that is so that the, the uh, lookout can uh, go outside and walk around, get some exercise, and wash the windows and that kind of thing. And a whole lot more convenient. The, the tower that we lived in had a uh, it was 14 by 14 cabin with a three foot catwalk. And it was 85 feet tall and had 111 steps from the floor to the top. And so that's, a, that's kind of the, the look at Old Slim up there. And... A little talk about lookout towers and I'm going to be doing some uh, I've been a lookout tower geek ever since that summer that those two summers that we spent up there and I visited quite a few of them photographed a bunch of them uh, they're notoriously hard to photograph because you're always shooting from the bottom up because they're on top of a mountain I think a, a drone would be an excellent way to take pictures of lookouts but I'm gonna go ahead and end this one for now and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it and maybe I'll, I'll take you to some We'll go out and visit some lookout towers and get you some views. But right now I'm going to go ahead and give you a pan because this is up on the second floor of the museum. And that is actually the pump building over there. That's part of the mechanics behind all this. Uh, they use the water from this lake to water golf courses and that kind of thing. It's reuse water. Now we're shooting into the sun. I know you can't see real well that way. And Little fountains out there to aerate it so that the fish, it's suitably aerated for the fish. And the, We've had some recent storms, so the water's a little muddy right now. It isn't always that way. But uh, anyway, we're on the second floor on the balcony of the, of the museum. Beautiful day, a little bit cool. But as I always say, uh, take care of each other, uh, love each other. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful time to be alive. And we'll talk to you on the next one.